What's good, comic fam? We're here at Milky Comics assembling your mystery mail call, but I gotta bring the guru in because you know he brings the heat every single month. What do we got in front of us? Guys, I get to provide the special books that go into the mystery mail call where some lucky person is going to get something extra special. Yeah, this is the hottest comics in the box this month. We only have seven of them going out. So keep in mind, not everyone's getting one of these, but I want to showcase some of the goods because, dude, you brought the heat. Yeah, this is a favorite just for most anybody. Amazing Spider-Man 122, Romita cover, Death of Green Goblin. If you have issue 121, you have to have a 122. And if you get the 122, find a 121 because you're going to want to also have the Death of Gwen Stacy. Great story arc. This has a special place in my heart because I had my copy signed by Stan Lee. who was about 13 years old. It was free. Tell them about what you did to your copy. No line. Color touched the heck out of it. It looks beautiful. I can vouch. You did a good job. Yeah, you, you did a good job for a 13 year old kid, but this one is not color touch. No. You're gonna get a copy that you could get graded and it's gonna come back a blue label. Let's take a look at this FF50 because if you are a fan of poop brown covers, well, this one right here is a major part of the trifecta. Johnny Storm going to college. Heck yeah. Uh, you got a huge Silver Surfer uh, cover there. I mean, 48, 49. You didn't see him in 48. He's got a tiny 49. There he is, big and silver. And But for real though, this is a major Silver Surfer key. I just kid. It's still Kirby, Kirby right? and it's huge. And someone's gonna be very excited to get this in their box. Dude, we have a couple like horror books that we gotta show the community here. Yeah. Bernie Wrights and Goodness. Yeah, Origin of Swamp Thing, um, his first title of his own, number one. Like you said, The King of Macabre, Bernie Wrights in. Another horror book we're gonna be throwing in there is Marvel Spotlight number two, first appearance of World by Night. I love this book, I'm specking on it hard. Is that why we've seen it show up in the mail call a couple times over the last few months? Yeah, I just have faith in this book and I just feel the community needs more of these books and uh, I'm keeping as many as I can, but I gotta let some go for you guys. All right, speaking of which, you must be watching the show because Avengers 48, major spec book, and we just found out we have some more time to spec on this movie because they keep pushing it back. Yeah, we got Black Knight, I think the third version, but this should be the movie version, apparently. Avengers 48's first appearance, and it's just gonna be an exciting character to see on the big screen, so. Is that part of, like, you putting this all together? You're thinking of not just major keys, but some spec value, too? Yeah, I'm just gonna go with what I think has value now. It's gonna continue to have growth, and something you guys are gonna appreciate. So that's why there's always some thought put into these books, and why they're usually recognizable keys. All right, just like this one, ASM 41. This was one of the very first, not this copy, because I couldn't afford as nice of a copy as this one is back in the day, but one of the first ASM keys I could get because the Rhino makes his first appearance and seldomly you get such a great profile shot. ASM did that pretty well. Yeah, usually with their first appearances, you saw these characters on the cover and you don't always get that, but this is as, as prominent as it becomes and it can be for a character. It's still a really kind of a affordable key to get into as it goes for Spider-Man's, but that's a great solid copy. Someone's gonna love the first Rhino. All right, and then one person a month. We should have like one or two of these types of books, but we wanna make someone's like, like those books will make someone's year for sure, but I wanna make someone's decade every single month. We gotta send them something big. We got Conan, number one. Roy Thomas Goodness, graded at 9.2. Yeah, 9.2. Origin, first appearance of Conan, and first cam appearance of King Cole. There you go, and it looks so fresh. Now, why Conan number one? Was this from your PC? Bronze Age classic key, man. I, I just got this in a collection. I kept it, and I looked at it, and I was like, ugh, I want to keep it, but I think somebody else is going to love it more than me, because I'm... Golden Age guy, man. Come <laughs> on, dude. And this is Barry Windsor Smith. So, like, if you love Barry Windsor Smith and if you don't, 
You're going to love this comic. And if you don't want to capsulate, break it out, read the story, because it's freaking worth the read. Comic fan, best of luck. Look out in your mail call. And if you're interested in signing up, well, these are already long gone. You should have signed up last month. But you can hit the link in the description. Join the community. You help support our show. And you can sign up for this month, because we are currently in open enrollment. We've got some goodies coming, guys. Yeah, if you like these, you haven't seen nothing yet. Comic fam, you always gotta go through your collection. Always gotta go through your comics, and sometimes you get lucky. I'm here at the shop. Russ is going through boxes from a long time ago. Oh yeah. And there was a bag filled with coverless comics, and I think you gotta show the community what just happened. This is absolutely insane. I don't even remember when I picked up this collection because I have boxes upstairs from stuff that I bought over a year ago that are just sitting, and I'm going through the collection, and I find Brave and the Bold 28, 29, and 30 in a collection. Now, we do have the front cover, but no back cover for this one. 29 is totally coverless. 30's missing coverless in the first wrap, but still, I mean, these are super cool books yeah, that it. I wasn't even aware that I had because when they came in the collection, I didn't even check it, you know? So this is just a good example about how you gotta always check even your coverless comic books. Even the ones that you think are just not worth anything because they're so damaged. Because right now we're sitting in front of three major DC keys. Mm -hmm. First appearance of the Justice League, second appearance of the Justice right. League, third appearance of the Justice League. And the crazy funny thing is that three months ago, I actually had a different collection coming with a coverless Justice League number one. So I've gotten coverless Justice League number one and a coverless first appearance of Justice League. Justice League, you know. We're so excited we're saying Justice League. League. Justice League, right. Yeah, and just so you know, um, if you get coverless stuff, there's a lot of, there can be a lot of value to coverless stuff. Oh, still. Sure. Golden Age books and timings, but if you're not sure, you can actually just uh, Google the story. And if you type in the Google the story, it'll help you search what book it is. Because sometimes you don't have the indicia or Dico, whatever you want to call it, on the bottom. And you just type in the story or something on the front page and it'll help reference and that way you can locate and figure out exactly what you have so especially for golden age you're going to have a lot of these smaller mini stories that are four pages six pages long something like that if you google the title yeah absolutely you will find these books that you wouldn't know otherwise yeah i remember back in the day russ when you were having me go through my overstreet after i was done through the collection you go okay let me see how you did and you start to go through and pick stuff out you tell me, you gotta check every single one that looks interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think this one right here is a great example because this Brave and the Bold was sandwiched in between coverless copies in one bag. Right. How crazy is that, comic fam? You ever find something? Let us know in the comment section below. We wanna hear about your hunting success stories. You gotta always check. Fam, standing in front of all of these USPS boxes. This is where your mail call goes when they go to pick them up at the end of the week. They're going out to you, but I want to give a big thank you to Sketchbooks. This artist is so talented over on Instagram, hooking us up with this gorgeous Venom print on the back of the newsletter. And I'm gonna need this because I'm gonna tell you guys some print counts and I'm gonna forget if I don't use it as reference. Oh. 
Ooh, the first artist we have to give a big thank you to is Ben Temple Smith, one of my all time favorite artists in the comic game right now, hooking us up with two different versions of a virgin copy of White Ash number one. We have this color version. It was only 700 printed and that's including creator comps and damages. So it's a lot less than that. And then we also have this black and white version, a one in 500, including comps and damages. All right, this other artist, you already know who she is. Artist Piper hooking us up with a virgin copy of Mindbenders number one. And these are pretty low print. The first color copy right here, one in 700. And then we have a black and white variant with a little purple accent. I like that, she's so classy. One in 400, including comps and damages. Good luck. Part of the mystery mail call is more recent comics that have come out. At least one goes in every box. If you know me, you know I love modern stuff. That's that's kind of my my forte. We're putting some Far Sector in the mail call right now. Dude, we did a whole discussion about this on the show. I love this Green Lantern. Tom is not really a classically Green Lantern person, I think, so it turned him on to the comic. I'm already a Green Lantern fan, so read it. All right, so what's your favorite part of this issue? Are we going to spoil it already? We're about to do a whole, a whole discussion on this series. About the series. About the What do you series. like the most? I like how far away it takes place from the entire rest of the DC universe, the entire rest of the Green Lantern universe. It's its own separate story, which makes it very easy to jump into if you're not familiar with all the crazy lantern stuff. And you're not going to be hit with a bunch of different species and a bunch of different Green Lanterns and a nope. bunch of deep, different heroes, because this takes place galaxies away far sector so you're getting a fresh green lantern story and like not burdened by the giant history of all that is the green lantern plus jamal campbell's on the art and it sings yeah naomi come on all right something is killing the children james tinian talk about this book because everyone loves it everyone loves it and for good reason uh i finally got caught up on it we are also going to be talking about this on the show coming up very soon uh something is killing the children. There is a very scary monster in the woods killing children. And it turns out there's a lot more monsters than you kind of are introduced to at the beginning. And there's a monster hunter going on and there's a whole bunch of secret monster killing societies. And this unit, this issue is starting to crack open the wider scope slash universe of the whole something is killing the children story. And it's kind of just starting to heat up in a whole, a whole different way. So if you're not reading it, you should probably be reading something is killing the children. Batman writer on his own independent run through Boom Studios. You gotta be reading it. And of course, we gotta give some Scout Comics love, North Bend. I might have cheated and put this one here. It is my- You cheated. It's my single favorite Scout comic. Like, it's, it has taken the place of It Eats What Feeds It. Whoa. North Bend. Big words. I'm yeah. excited to chat with you about this on the show. I haven't caught up yet, but you went mm -hmm. straight for this book when I said, yo, we mm -hmm. gotta chat about some comics to recommend to the community. Mm -hmm. It's got CIA, it's got conspiracies, it's got protesters, it's got politics. It's everything Ryan loves. Yes, it's got some creepy future war that's happening. I like it, I like it. It's only four issues in so far too, so it's not too far ahead. You can catch up pretty easy if you're like me and that's your cup of tea. Yeah, I look, recommend North Bend. Look out in your box, there's gonna be some recent comics that just hit the shelf going in every mail call just because you gotta be reading more comics. Geek responsibly.